Hello and welcome to the first section of this volume, Learning VMware Horizon 7 Architecture. So what are we going to learn in this first section? Before we talk about the specifics of VMware Horizon, we're going to define what we mean when we use the term Virtual Desktop Infrastructure, or VDI. We're then going to quickly cover a brief history of the VMware VDI products with the goal of providing you with some of the key background of how the solution has evolved and matured to where we are today. We will then move on to describe the new features in this latest release of the software and how to license the different versions that are available. Next, we're going to move on to talk about the Horizon architecture components and some of the key features that the solution delivers. As part of this, we will describe each of the solution components and how it works, along with discussing some of the key features that these components offer. By the end of this section, you will have gained a good understanding of Horizon View, its components and how it works. So let's get started with the first video of this section, in this video, we're going to introduce you to virtual desktop infrastructure, how it works, and some of the benefits of deploying the solution. We will then introduce you to the VMware VDI solution, starting with a brief history of the VMware journey up to where we are today and the new features in Horizon 7. When we talk about virtual desktop infrastructure, or VDI as it's more commonly referred to, we are typically describing a solution whereby the desktop operating system is hosted as a virtual machine running on a hypervisor that in turn is hosted on a server that is part of the data center infrastructure. This type of desktop virtualization is also sometimes referred to as a hosted virtual desktop, or HVD. So how does it work? A user connects remotely from their endpoint device, a PC, thin client terminal, or mobile device, to a connection broker. The connection broker manages the available resources and connects the user to an appropriate virtual desktop machine. In the first VDI solutions that came to market, there was no concept of a connection broker, and a user would connect directly to a virtual desktop machine. Once connected, the screenshots of the virtual desktop machine are sent over the network back to the endpoint device using an optimized delivery protocol, and the mouse movements and keyboard strokes are sent back to the virtual desktop machine via the same protocol. No data actually leaves the data center, but instead screenshot updates, or pixel changes, are sent over the network. It's like watching a smart TV with the pictures broadcast to your TV from the TV studios rather than the actors performing the show in your lounge, and you interact with the TV via the remote control. From an architectural perspective, the virtual desktop typically gets built on demand, bringing together the different components that make up a full desktop. The operating system, user profile, desktop policies and applications are all treated as separate individual components, abstracted from the underlying machine and operating system, and then delivered back together to create the user's desktop experience. You should remember that virtual desktop machines need to be treated differently to physical desktops, and to reap all the benefits of virtual desktop machines they should be built from the ground up and managed as virtual machines using some of the components that have been specifically designed for the management of virtual desktop infrastructure. VDI sometimes gets confused with server-based computing or remote desktop services. So what are the differences between these technologies in VDI, if any at all? Let's take server-based computing first, as this is the technology that has probably been around the longest. In fact, you could probably trace it back as far as the 1950s with the introduction of mainframe technology that was designed to deliver centralized computer power to run a set of applications with users connecting to the applications using a green screen type terminal, which is more or less just a dumb screen and keyboard. SBC is seemingly not that different to VDI in the way that it works. Again, you are connecting remotely to an application that is running on server infrastructure hosted in a data center. But that's where the similarities end. Let's take delivering applications first. The difference is that the applications are installed and run on the actual servers themselves and are using a multi-user version of that application to create the individual user sessions. The user would then connect to their own individual, separate and protected session of that application instead of connecting to an instance of the operating system that is running the applications. As everything is running in the data center, users would connect to the session via a terminal or thin client. Using the same model, you could also deliver hosted desktop sessions in the same way. Instead of connecting to a separate protected individual application session, a user now connects to a separate protected individual session of the server's operating system. The one thing to note here is that the user is essentially running a server-based operating system and not a desktop-based operating system. So you can see here the differences. Server-based computing is more of a shared approach and VDI a user gets a full-blown desktop operating system. So what are the benefits of VDI? By virtualizing your end-user desktop estate into a centrally managed service, you can deliver real benefits not only to IT admins, but also to your end-users. So if you look at security and compliance, no data actually leaves the data center unless the IT department has specifically configured a policy to allow it, such as the ability to connect to a USB drive. 
All that gets transmitted to the client devices are the screenshots of the virtual desktop, the keyboard and mouse interactions which are sent back to the virtual desktop. As I said before, it's like having a remote control for your desktop. So if you have centralised desktops, that equates to centralised management. Now that the desktops are virtualised and hosted in the data centre, it is much easier to perform tasks such as updating and patching an operating system or installing new applications. The virtual desktops are all created from a single gold image that is maintained and updated centrally, so you don't have to visit every physical machine. You can simply update the image, recreate the virtual desktops with a few mouse clicks, and hey presto, all the users get the new updated version. You can also troubleshoot the environment more easily without the need for a desk side visit. By having desktops hosted on a virtual platform, it allows you to scale up and scale down much more easily without the need to necessarily purchase more physical desktops. You could use thin client devices or allow users to connect from their own devices. As resources are now moved to the data center server infrastructure and accessed remotely, environments can be spun up quickly and also taken down just as easily to accommodate seasonal workers or contractors who are working on specific projects. Users now have access to their virtual desktops wherever they are and no longer need to be in the office sitting at a desk or have a PC to access their corporate desktop applications. They can continue to be productive even with inclement weather, traffic or other events that prevent them from getting to the office, delivering real flexibility and agility. Virtual desktop clients enable mobile devices, tablets and non-corporate owned devices to connect securely to corporate desktop environments. Following the flexible working theme, users can now choose a device that suits them to access their corporate desktop. Whether it be a tablet, smartphone or non-Windows platform, users can still access their corporate desktop securely from remote locations. Implementing a virtual desktop environment and adopting operational best practices around image, patch and profile management with centralised application deployment results in saving operational expenditure, or OPEX, compared to traditional desktop management Capital expenditures are still required to support the virtual desktop environment. One of the things I hear all the time is that deploying VDI will reduce costs. The thing to point out is that yes, it will reduce operational expenditure, but typically the capital expenditure at the beginning of a VDI project will be somewhat higher as you deploy the infrastructure. Overall though, the costs will reduce through savings in the management of the solution, and you will not be caught in the typical three-year PC recycle trap. Introducing VMware Horizon 7 the concept of virtualizing Windows desktops has been around since early 2002, when VMware customers started virtualizing desktop workloads and hosting them on a VMware server and ESX servers in the data center. As there was no concept of a connection broker at that time, and neither was the phrase VDI really used, customers simply connected using the RDP protocol directly to a dedicated desktop virtual machine, running something like Windows XP. It wasn't until 2005 that VMware first showed the idea of having the concept of a connection broker. By demonstrating a prototype at VMworld, VDI entered the limelight, raising the profile of the technology. It was also at the same event that companies such as Propero showed their version of a connection broker. Propero would later become the Horizon View connection server. In early 2006, VMware launched the VDI Alliances program with a number of technology vendors such as Citrix, HP, IBM, Sun and Wise Technology all joining the program. By 2007, the prototype connection broker was introduced to customers to help with the development before it was given to the VMware product organization to productize it and turn it into a real product. The release product was called Virtual Desktop Manager 1.0, or VDM. The year 2007 was a busy year, and it also saw VMware acquire ProPro for $25 million in order to accelerate their connection broker development, leading to the VMworld announcement and release of VDM 2.0, in January 2008. After the release of VDM 2.0 in early 2008, a second release came at the end of 2008 along with a new name, VMware View 3.0. This was also the year that Citrix entered the VDI market, releasing Zen Desktop 2.0 following the acquisition of ZenSource. VMware View 4.0 was released in 2009 and was the first version to include the PC over IP protocol from Teradici. PC over IP developed a much richer user experience than RDP could deliver. In 2010, VMware View 4.5 was released with new features such as local mode for offline desktops, PC over IP enhancements, Windows 7 support and the ability to tier storage. This was also the year that VMware talked publicly about the biggest VDI reference case to date with the Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi who deployed 50,000 virtual desktop machines. 
The following year, 2011, VMware View 4.6 was released with two new, notable new features. First was the iPad client, which allows the user to connect to their virtual desktop session on an iPad using the PC over IP protocol. The second new feature was the PC over IP secure gateway function for the View security server, which allows users to connect to their virtual desktop without needing to have a VPN connection. Later the same year, View 5.0 was released, with more new features aimed at improving the end user experience. The key one being the introduction of persona management, which allowed a user's profile to be independent from the virtual desktop. When a user logs in via the same profile to any virtual desktop, their profile is delivered on demand. View 5.0 also introduced 3D graphics support using the latest vSphere 5.0 platform, as well as some major enhancements to PC over IP. Although only a point release in May 2012, View 5.1 had a number of significant enhancements, especially around storage with the introduction of the View Storage Accelerator, View Composer Array Integration, and the ability to scale the hosting infrastructure up to a 32-node cluster when you use NFS storage. This version also added RADIUS two-factor authentication, improved USB, standalone View Composer, and the ability to support profile migration from XP to 7, as well as from physical desktops to virtual desktops all using Persona Management. In March 2013, View 5.2 was released, and to bring it in line with VMware's launch of the brand launch of Horizon, which was launched at the same time, it was renamed to Horizon 5.2. In this release, there were a number of new features based on end-user experiences, such as support for unified communications with Microsoft Link 2013, Hardware Accelerated Graphics with Virtual Shared Graphics Acceleration, or VSGA, and Windows 8 support. One of the biggest updates came in the form of a feature pack that allowed a user to access their desktop in an HTML5 browser using the VMware Blast protocol. Second release, later in 2013, Horizon View 5.3, saw the introduction of Virtual Dedicated Graphics Acceleration, or VDGA, which allowed a virtual desktop to have dedicated access to a GPU in the host server. It was also the first release to support Windows Server 2008 R2 as the virtual desktop machine, meaning you could skin the operating system of the server OS to look like a desktop. The main reason to do this was that there was no service provider license agreement, or SPLA, for Windows 7. So the license agreement doesn't allow you to deploy Windows 7 as a virtual desktop until you purchase a Microsoft VDA license. In this model, you don't require a VDA license. The other advantage is that Windows Server 2008 Data Center Edition allows you to have unlimited virtual machines. It's licensed on a per-CPU model. It's worth noting that we are running the Windows Server operating system as a replacement for the desktop operating system and not as a desktop session. The final 5.x release arrived in March 2014 with Horizon View 5.3.1, which also added support for virtual SAN. Horizon 6 with View was released in June 2014, and the core features of this version was the addition of View-hosted applications, the first time VMware supported hosted applications and desktops using RDSH. View 6 also introduced the CloudPod architecture, which gives the ability to span View infrastructure across multiple data centers. Also of note in View 6 was the removal of View Local Mode, which allowed users to download their virtual desktops to their local device. VMware suggests using Mirage to provide this functionality, although this ultimately became a product that is its own right with Horizon Flex. As part of the 6.0 release, there are also another couple of updates. The first was 6.0.1, which was released in September 2014 and added USB 3 support, extended printing, HTML access for Windows 8, and system tray redirection for hosted applications. The final 6 release, 6.0.2, was released in December 2014. In this release, there was no update to the view infrastructure components, such as the connection server, but it was instead billed as a new feature pack. It added new versions of the view agent, HTML access, MMR redirection, and scanner redirection, to name but a few. Support for NVIDIA Grid vGPU was the biggest of the new features in View 6.1, which was released in March 2015. Also in this release, VMware added support for IPv6, Virtual SAN 6, virtual volumes and Windows Server 2012 R2 running as the desktop OS. In June 2015, the final 6.1 release, 6.1.1, was launched, adding features such as client drive redirection, support for Linux desktops, MMR for RDS desktops, and HTML support for hosted applications. That now brings us up to the previous version of Horizon View 6.2, 
which was launched in September 2015. View 62 added support for Windows 10 desktops, access point integration, AMD based VDGA, 4K monitors, Virtual SAN 6.1, along with a number of enhancements to the CloudPod architecture, admin console and Linux desktops. Following on from View 6.2, VMware also launched two maintenance releases. 6.2.1 was released in December 2015 and 6.2.2 in February 2016. So that brings us right up to date to the latest version, VMware Horizon 7. With a few more enhancements being added with the 7.0.1 release in June 2016, 7.0.2 released in September 2016 and finally 7.0.3 which was released on December the 8th 2016. So what are the key features that were added in Horizon 7? So support for instant clones which we will cover later on uh, in this course. Blast Extreme Protocol for delivering desktop experience to end users. Increased scalability for the CloudPod architecture. Smart Policies which provides an integration with the VMware UEM solution to deliver Horizon specific policies. URL content and client drive redirection which is used for controlling whether or not a URL link is opened on the client or on the agent and in a remote desktop or application. For example, for added security, an admin can set a policy so that all employees working inside a company network, a URL links that points outside the company may be opened on a remote desktop or application. Windows 10 support was added, along with Linux desktops. And that's just a few of the features, there are actually uh, several hundred. So now we've completed our history lesson, we're right up to date with the latest version Let's look at the full versions or flavours of Horizon 7 that are available.